Right, 15th of December 2020. What a year, Covid year. Apparently the virus has now got another variant, um, which I think is slightly different to calling it a strain. Um, I think a strain is a little bit more changed and independent and virulent. A variant is just perhaps one or two decorations on it has altered a bit. One of its spikes might have withdrawn. It could be a good thing. There they're saying it's, it uh, allows it to work faster or something. So that's the sort of news. Um, in America, Joe Biden won the Academy votes. So he's now set and started to do the transition over. Trump will be there to the 20th of January. Um, but uh, who knows what will happen. Well, I know President Obama is on Radio 4 doing little talks and stuff, so Biden was his right-hand man when Obama was president, so basically it's going to be like an Obama thing, isn't it? Right, let me just zoom in. Zoom in. I'm up in the woods. This is a window of good weather today. Good temperature for December. Um, sunshine, blue sky, and there possibly could be a sprinkling of rain. So I've had to carry umbrella waterproofs just in case. Because a uh, sprinkling could be a quite a heavy downpour this time of year, so I've come prepared. I've walked from home, got up here for 11. Um, I might be walking back as well, more than likely. Um, set off earlier by about three hours because it's now winter. It's dark by half past three, three o'clock ish. So it's, it'll be the shortest day of the year in a couple of days' time. So you've got to get your walk in. If I've got walk there and back, then I've got to allow for that extra hour of walking. That's a nice little scene there, look. It's nice and fresh. It's been awful weather, actually. We've had terrible weather. Rain, grey skies, fierce winds. Really has been one of those years of that all the time. And then you'll get a day like this. It's nearly Christmas. And uh, I've bought a couple of very small items so far uh, not going mad because really we're just using it's, it's, we're just going to be on our own Sarah and I I'm not taking any risks because I haven't seen the others for a long time months, months they live in a different area you're not supposed to go out of your area, we're in tier 3 they're in tier 1 but we're in tier 3 and I don't think they're supposed to, no, they're in tier two, but I don't think they're allowed to come into our, our area. Not only that, it's too risky. My flat is small. You can only do safe distancing just about with two of you. You know? Uh, it's just too risky, especially with, if teenagers were coming. I just can't risk it at all. I have had my lungs compromised quite a few times over the last 10 years. I never used to, of course. I was always pretty healthy, a swimmer and a runner. I think smoking didn't help. And being a passive smoker as well. I mean, where we had a pot smoker in the home, in the building, I mean, I've got a couple of curtains. I can't get the pot coloration, discoloration out. Um, they're still tinged with yellow and brown 
from their skunking. Um, and it could have affected my teeth, by the way, as well. Because when I had to have my tooth out not long ago, I had big abscess. Basically, they, they asked me if I smoked. Well, I had done a long time ago. You know, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. And I had periods of my life where I didn't smoke at all. But I think if there was any discoloration, it, I was, it was coming from the bloke that used to smoke skunk a lot. And not just him, and there'd be groups of them. It was terrible for me. They moved next door, but I think they, they've cut down a bit now. But it's a very, very invasive smoke. I mean, I'm going to boil that curtain eventually. I'm using it as a draft excluder at the moment. But when I get a chance, I'm going to boil it. It is white. It's, it's not really a curtain. It's some sort of throw. But it's uh, it could be boiled. Hoping I can get that awful yellow stuff out. Um, where it is, it was a door, I used, it as a, used it as a door curtain, so obviously any invasion, it was front line defence. And it has been washed once, but probably on a 40 degree. Anyway, that's just bits of useless information that I reflect on when I'm out. I'm on the way to Sand Bay, and it's probably a good month, I would say, since I've been over here. Um, this I'm going through the wood and in theory I should be walking back through the wood and not getting a bus but there is a possibility that I might get a bus I've got to walk up a, I'm going to go a route I go I was going to go up the beach but I've decided to go through the village and along a bit of a dodgy road, which takes seven minutes to get through. Um, in the summer, I counted, in that seven minutes, I counted at least 150 cars past me. This is in a small village. Um, the last time I came, after the summer period and the, after the lockdown. I think it was 40. So it's a possibility, because it's a nice day, people would drive down to the beach. That's probably why I'm not going to go up the beach now. I'll come back that way. And if I feel like I need to get on a bus, I'll just put my mask on and take a risk. But we're not advised to. Somebody sheltering from the from the winter. Uh, frying pan. Yeah. People have got to survive. Some people have got lost their homes through this uh, terrible job loss. Um, there's a lot of uh, distress in the world at the moment because of the virus. <sighs> yeah. So I'm going over to Sand Bay, going to have a walk around Sand Bay, hopefully get back home by at least half three, or back to town by half past three, because I really need to pop into the shops. I've got bits to get. <sighs> I want to try and get the king prawns if I can. Depends what state I'm in when I get there. So I might be covered in mud. Now it was reported last night that down a road called Victoria Quadrant, not far from where I used to live in the past, a baby boy was found dead in a garden there and I seen the flowers outside the place. But on the news last night, they're, they're they're saying it could be murder. Uh, it might not be, but uh, that's what was reported on the West News last night. But I, I didn't deliberately go there. I was passing by on the way up to the wood. 
a route I take quite a lot. And there was a little card from somebody. It was very sad, really. But it might, we can't jump to conclusions. Anything could have happened. Don't know if he was a newborn or... Don't know. Not many people so far. A couple up there with a small child. Um, I've got a hat, scarf and gloves in my bag if necessary. I got quite hot walking up the um, thing. And what's that say? Dwight D. Uh, Eisenhower, Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, camped here with American troops preparing for D-Day in 1944. Right, ending on that note then, we'll be going down the main route, going through the village, and there's a lovely, lovely raven there, look. Hey, yeah, uh, have you come from where I live? Have you? I've got nothing in my bag, or I have. Yeah. Yeah, aren't you lovely? Come and say hello. Are you? You come in to say hello. You could be a rook. Or a baby raven. <laughs>